On this week's episode, I'm joined by Jacqueline de Montaigne. And although that's not a Portuguese surname, and Jacqueline is a mixture of many different nationalities, she's proudly Portuguese. Jacqueline was previously a medical consultant specializing in child nutrition and at the age of 37 painted her first mural and today is one of Portugal's most sought after muralists and painters. We discuss amongst other things, the work that she does and the ethereal quality of her paintings, some of the conversations she has along the way, the things that she loves about living and working in Portugal, how Portugal is such a fantastic place for her kids and we speak about Portugal as her sole place and her sanctuary. For those of you listening, head over to our YouTube channel to watch some of this episode. And for those of you watching, click down below and subscribe. And for the full podcast episode, head over to Google, Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And now over to my conversation with Jacqueline. Welcome back or welcome to another episode of Portugal The Simple Life. And I'm delighted to be joined here by Jacqueline de Montaigne. Jacqueline, thank you for being on the podcast. How are you? Good, fine, thank you. Good morning. How are you? Very well. Very well, thank you. I am a sort of late bloomer in the art world. I, um, I'm Portuguese. I Well, Portuguese with 50 other different nationalities mixed in there, so quite a cocktail. Um, I was born here. We went to Saudi Arabia as children, then Scotland. Came back to Portugal when I was seven with a very strong Scottish accent, so no one could understand the thing we were saying. It's gone now. Yeah, yeah, completely. Everyone's like, oh, but you sound so British. And I'm like, yeah, but no one understood me 30 years ago. Um, we went to British to an English school, so became even more English Englishized. I don't think that's a word, but uh, st- studied here. I spent a lot of time abroad and traveling and always dabbled in art, always wanted to be an artist, um, but only really went for it at age 37. Amazing. I mean, what brought you back to it in the in after years of doing other things well I, I'd always painted and in my 20 at like 20 to 30 I painted a lot but I, I didn't have a distinct um, identity so it's quite hard to live off of it because essentially the value of your art comes from your identity as an artist I, I still didn't have an identity in my 20s and then uh, my youngest son was born premature when I was 30 so I'd always wanted to study nursing so I went off and sort of started a foundation in nursing ended up specializing in that and in babies with cleft palates and trisomy 21 and um, ended up being a public speaker on medical ethics went back to school did all that until I was about 37 and then um, we were going to build refugee camps in the south of Portugal and I thought it would be great to have public murals as a form of public education on the importance of breastfeeding in environments like that and safe nutrition so I contacted a curator anyway the Long story short, the the refugee camps didn't go forward. A year later, she said, well, you paint, wouldn't you like to try a mural? And I was a bit, found the idea a bit daunting. So I said, no, not really. Um, In the end, I did have a go and I've never looked back. Do you remember the the moves? Do you remember that kind of change in scenery and setting for you when you came across to Portugal as a a young girl? Well, I I remember my sister was born in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia. I remember that if we wanted to play outside, it had to be really early in the morning. I mean, the extreme heat. We were in a compound in the desert. And then we went to Scotland, of course, which is there's no sun there. Freezing cold, wet and miserable. Um, And we were in a very strict all girls school. Um, And then coming to Portugal, my grandparents were here and my my family's here. So it wasn't anything particularly new, but it was where we only spent holidays. And... um, I, I, I love I love it here. This is my soul place. It's my sanctuary. You you spoke about how not finding an identity yet in your work, but your work now, for everything that I've seen, very much has an identity. And I don't know if it was you that that used the phrase or someone else who's described your artwork, but the the the, the name was ethereal. Um, you know, very much a spiritual element to it. A lot of um, rooted in people, in facial features and these kind of things, but maybe describe your your art to to someone that hasn't seen it yet. My my art, I, I very much paint for myself. I paint for calm. It's my calm place. It brings me calm. It brings me balance. Um, I think I can paint in nearly any style, which is where I struggled when I was younger. I could do oil painting, pencil, uh, portraits, scientific illustration. But now, and I have a very short attention span. So I was, so late, 
I love doing portraits, but I love scientific illustration and nature-based things. And then, you know, one day I sort of did birds flying around someone's head and I thought, oh, that's amazing. I can put, bring the nature and figurative art together, which is wonderful for someone with a short attention span because I can do them together. I can do them separately. So I have three areas to play in. And um, I think my art is a fusion of nature and figurative art. It's monochromatic because that for me is calming. I'm not a fan of a lot of color. I use classical gilding techniques in everything from a 400 square meter mural. I am using gold leaf, uh, gold foil. Gold leaf I use in my original work to small paintings is 24 karat gold. So that's a distinct identity I have in my work. Um, take us just through kind of a journey. Um, if people want to just do a little tour of, of Jacqueline, the Montaigne artwork, where, where would they, where would you send them? How can they look around and see what you've done? You've done some amazing murals. Um, so yeah, where, 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 where can people see some of the, the work you've done? Well, I, I mean, I have pieces all the way up from Chavez down to Sambraj, so from one tip of the country to the other. But um, a concentration of my work is, is really in Lisbon. I have some very large pieces there. I have four or five pieces in El Shish factory. That's actually where I began. Um, I have a very large one near Parliament in Lisbon, in Largo Inks Ribeiro, and I have a couple down by Caixtre st uh, train station, where as, as if you're arriving from Cascais or leaving, it's on the water's edge. Um, I have a very large one in Expo, so they're not exactly within walking distance, but there are there are enough to see within Lisbon. Vanessa Teodoro, who's who's a, a friend of yours, and she's also been on the podcast. Um, she she spoke about how much fun it was painting in these places because of the conversations that you'd have with people, people stopping, asking questions, that sort of genuine curiosity from the local old ladies and stuff. Um, how has your experience been with, with local people in the place that you paint? Someone asked me the other day, is it because you have an audience? It, it's not because it's not an audience. It's the, the connection you make with the people. And Vanessa's right. I mean, from the first mural I did, I was like, that's it. I'm, I'm not going back to doing public speaking. This this is what I want to do. And it people bring you food. I mean, people bring you food. They come and talk to you. They tell you their stories. I, I've In my murals, I try very hard to bring in local stories into my work. So I will speak to local people. I will literally do my sketch on the spot. I, I will always present an idea to the client or who's hired me but I will ask that I can change it after speaking to the people that live there. But I, I love the conversations and the sharing and kids come and sit there and watch after school and you make friends. I mean, I, I painted, I've painted a few times in Kaishtre and there's a, a homeless support shelter place that there that supports the homeless. And there's two chaps in Lisbon. I've got Sr. Francisco and Sr. Paulo. And they have wandered around and helped me over the years when I paint murals and they're homeless people that I met maybe five years ago. So I'm I'm very touched and moved by the just complete strangers you meet. Um, there is a genuine. I find that in in Portugal with 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 almost everybody, and it seems to filter down to the youngsters. There's a genuine curiosity for for things, for stories, for people. For hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? I find when I've travelled around to other European countries, it's very much a passing by kind of culture very much uh, we don't have time to stop and talk whereas in Portugal we've got that time we give each other that time to sit and ask questions and have conversations I mean how important was that to your to your work as well you said you you're inspired by some stories has that all added to the work that you're doing uh, everything it, it it does I mean every mural I paint I dedicate to someone and usually it's some random person that's come and talk to me every day you know, uh, I painted in Kirkavelluj last year and this 90 90 something year old lady would come and just she'd bring a, her, her stool and she'd sit, ne sit next to me she says I hope I'm not bothering you I just want to watch uh -huh. and at the end I'd sort of put her name at the bottom of the new mural this year I've really branched out a lot into I mean I'll be in six or seven countries this year painting and next year uh -huh. I've really got few countries lined up but um I'm, I'm it's the first time I've traveled so much I'm finding it quite hard you know I'm only home for a few days then I'm off again and I've got two sons but next year, I'd like to do quite a few more here. I don't know. We'll see. But one thing that always stuck out when I was a child, I remember we'd come here on holiday and we were going up Kordireita, which is the tea room street in Kishkaish. Yep. And we, we stopped at a stall and we'd come from Scotland or, or wherever we were. 
and we'd stopped at a stall one of these little vendors and she was eating lunch but she was eating soup and bread and she says would you like some and I was really taken aback as a child I was like what do you mean you're eating but that is so Portuguese everyone always nods you know do you want to share my meal or I don't know I, I love it here the the weather the food the the climate the uh I don't know, the sand on the beach, everything. The beaches are beautiful. And bringing up children, I always thought I would travel, but I've really stuck here since I've been a mum. Yeah, that was going to actually be a question. With with your work that you've done with, with child nutrition, your two boys, the childhood that you had, which sounds like it was very varied and very sort of helter-skelter at times, I suppose. How, how wonderful is Portugal for, for children? I was actually... I became a mum very young. I had my first son at 20. It wasn't planned, but I embraced it. And my family were supportive from day one. And, um, you know, I was working in England and it was impossible to work with a newborn baby. So I came back here. And um, it's, there is no other place I would want to bring up my children, uh, just ever. My, I mean, they both, they're, they're safe. They, one practically lives at the stables in the Quinta de Marinho because he rides there and he's, safe and happy and you know the other one's a photographer the older one he's, he's almost 23 he's a photographer it's an amazing wow. place for them it's safe it's an amazing place to bring up children we've got really good schools beautiful parks it's it's just there is no other place i would bring up my boys because we have dual nationality but we've got basque we've got danish we've got english we've got portuguese but i of all my cousins and brothers and sisters and stuff I, I love it here. I love everything. I love Lisbon. I love the busyness. I love the smell. I can even deal with the bureaucracy. It's, it's a beautiful country. The people are lovely. They come with their challenges, but that just adds to the character. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. It's been a pleasure. So thank you for having me. <laughs> You're very welcome. And I'm going to let you call it. This, it. It's a wrap. So thank you once again to our guest. And thank you to all of you for listening. Please subscribe, share with your friends, give us a thumbs up, and please leave a comment or a review. We always love to hear from you. Don't forget, Portugal The Simple Life also has a magazine, so download it. It's for free. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And as we say in Portugal, Cesar's bem-vindo. Welcome to The Simple Life.